Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be looking at how to create the actual login page for our authentication system. So if you haven't seen the first couple of videos in those videos, we set up a registration page. We have a system for verifying the user's email. We also added CSRF protection, and now we are going to add in the ability to log in. So let's get right into that. So if we come on over to our database, you can see we have our user here, and that user has now been verified thanks to the link that they clicked in the email they received after signing up. In addition to that, we also have this login attempts table, which we're going to be talking about today, in order to keep track of login attempts on a user's account so that we can stop uh, brute force attacks from being able to get into someone's account. One other thing I'd like to mention is the CAPTCHA, which is a service that you can add to your site in order to prevent bots from trying to log into any kind of form you might have. So it's a nice thing to add to your site. Unfortunately, I can't add that in this series because you need a domain to do that, and I do not have one. So let's take a look at the HTML that we have here. We just have a basic form and a button, and when you click on that button, it will call the login function. If we take a look at the script.js file, you can see that the login function is not yet written, but today we're going to be writing that and we're going to be using the request function that we made in the very first episode. This request function is going to send an AJAX request to a PHP script, and we also have this little bit of code right here that will send the CSRF token in order to protect against CSRF attacks. So we can go ahead and add that to our login page by copying the generated token to the header of the login.php page. We also need to include utils.php, and just like that, we have CSRF protection on our login page. This script right here is going to be the script that we're gonna send the AJAX request to. So we can actually go ahead and go over to the browser and just navigate to this page so that while we're writing the code, we can kind of look at some of the output and work through it together. The very first thing we wanna do is grab our post variables, both the email and the password. Now, just for testing purposes, we're going to just hard code in the email and password, which of course we'll comment out later. We're also going to want to check if these post variables are set, but we'll leave this commented out for now since we're not sending any post variables. Now we're going to use the connect function from a previous episode to connect to our MySQL database. And if that connection was successful, we can go ahead and open up an if statement here and just close the connection at the very end. Otherwise, we'll have a little error message that we failed to connect to the database. So now we can go ahead and use our SQL select function from a previous episode to call a MySQL select query on our database and get the results back into PHP. So when we use this SQL select function, we're going to follow this pattern every single time where we see if the results didn't return false. Then we check if the number of rows is one. And if that's true, we got a result back. Otherwise, we weren't able to select anything from the database. Now I'm going to jump over to table plus here so that we can go ahead and look at our query and get the results back really quickly so we can just kind of debug this here. All right, so we're going to select the ID, the password, and whether or not our user is verified from our database. And we only want to select this information where we have the right email, so we're just going to put this in manually for now, but in PHP we'll replace it with a question mark later. As you can see, we get the ID, password, and verified from the users table. Now we also want to select for some information from our login attempts table. So we're going to use a left join to grab some of that information. So we're going to left join on login attempts where the user field is equal to the ID of the user. Now we want to make sure whenever we use ID that we put the right table name in front of it because both tables have an ID field. So we're going to set this to users ID and users ID. And this field right here is just going to be the user from the login attempts table. So now we also want to select how many login attempts are inside of our table. So to do that, we're just going to count the number of login attempt ID fields that it can find. But of course, once we do that, we also have to add a group by statement, and we're just going to group it by the user's ID. Now, as you can see, we get that there are three requests in our login attempts field database. Sorry. So what we can also do is check the timestamp. That way, when we set this up in PHP, we can only look at requests that have happened within the last hour. So as you can see, if I change this, we no longer are selecting or counting that request or that login attempt. So we can take this code over to our PHP, copy it in, and just replace the timestamp with a question mark and replace the email with a question mark. 
Now this is going to be an integer and a string. And then the first value is going to be an hour ago, which we'll make in a second. And then the other one is our email. So to get the timestamp one hour ago, we're just going to take the current time and subtract 60 times 60, and that is one hour ago. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out how many times someone has attempted to log into this user's account within the last hour, because if that has happened too many times, we want to lock the account down for a little bit because something's probably fishy. Now we can go ahead and fetch the result from our select statement and we'll just print this out to the page along with a pre-tag so that we get nice formatted text here. And as you can see, we have all of this information from our database. Now, if we hop on over to the config.php, you can see we have this variable called max login attempts per hour, which I've set to five. So if we ever exceed that number, we want to not allow the user to log in. Basically, this means someone can attempt their password five times, but after that, they get shut out for an hour. This is gonna deter most people from trying brute force attacks where they'll have to try thousands of passwords in order to maybe guess their password correctly. If you delay them by an hour every five passwords, it makes the attack completely unreasonable. So now all we're doing here is checking if the user is verified because if they weren't verified, then they're not allowed to log in yet. So I can go ahead and go over to our user table and actually just test this real quick by setting our verified to zero and then trying this again. As you can see, we print out not verified. So now we're going to check our login attempts within the last hour. So we're just going to see if that value is less than the max attempts per hour. And if it is, everything's OK. Otherwise, we're not going to let them log in. Finally, the last thing we need to do is just verify that they entered the correct password. And to do that, we're going to use the password verify function in PHP. This function is going to return a Boolean, so we can just put this inside of an if statement, and we're going to compare the password that we sent over the post variable, and we're going to compare that to the password that's in our database. Now we can refresh, and you can see that it says incorrect password, because this is not actually my password. So now what we have to do is we have to actually create these login attempts every time we try to log in. And I had some login attempts already put in here just for testing, but now we can go ahead and actually start creating our own with PHP. And to do that, we're going to use the SQL insert function. Now we want to insert these login attempts into the database if the user is verified and they are under the attempt limit, but they put in the wrong password. Or even if they put in the right password, we can still add this attempt to the database, but we'll just delete it after. So we're going to insert one login attempt, we're going to insert null for the ID, and then we're going to insert the user's ID for user. We are also going to take account of the IP that's trying to log into this account. That information is not really useful, but it is kind of fun to keep track of that, so we'll just add it here. Now we can just see if everything inserted correctly, we will proceed to check the password. Otherwise, there is some kind of strange issue with the database and we weren't able to insert that login attempt into the table. Just forgot quotes right here. And as you can see, we are now adding new login attempts to the database every time we run this script. And this number right here is going up and up until eventually we've tried to log in too many times in the last hour. So now we need to actually log our user in. And to do that, we're going to use session variables. So we'll go up to the top and start the session. And then right inside of this if statement, we can create a session variable called logged in, which we will set to true. We'll also save the user's ID in a session variable because this will become useful later on for some other functionality that we might want to add. We'll also echo out something to let the user know that they've logged in correctly. So we can go ahead and remove a lot of our debug code here, and we'll also uncomment out all of our post variables and make sure that we're checking if everything is set to. We're now going to replace all of these messages with error codes so that our JavaScript can check these error codes and print out a nice message to the user. So we'll just go ahead and go through this and replace these all with numbers. And then we will go ahead and set up our JavaScript after. So while I was editing the video, I realized I forgot something pretty critical in the login script. The first thing I forgot is that we actually want to only add things into the login attempts database if they failed to put in the correct password. So I'm just going to move this SQL insert into the else statement. That way it only runs if they entered the wrong password. Now we can go ahead and fix the error codes here so that if the statement or the login attempt is properly inserted, we'll return a one, which means that the password or username was incorrect. Otherwise we'll echo out two, which means that we failed to insert into our login attempts database.
Now we also want to delete all of the login attempts out of the database if the user enters the correct password. We're going to use the SQL update function to run a delete query on our database. I know the naming is a little bit weird, but this function is going to just work exactly how we want it to for delete and update. So we'll say delete from login attempts, where user is equal to question mark, and of course this question mark is going to get filled in with the user's ID. And by doing this, we're deleting all the login attempts for that user once they enter the correct password and log in. This is important because otherwise, if they log in and log out five times within an hour, it will say that they're not allowed to log in anymore, even though they should be allowed to. So now if we test this out when we enter the correct username and password and try to log in, you can see that all of our stuff is cleared. Now that's not the only mistake I made here. I actually forgot to check if the password is actually set. I forgot to wrap it in the isSet function. And then I also forgot to actually validate our CSRF token on the server side. So the first thing we're going to do is check if the CSRF token is set, and then we'll call our validate token function, which is contained in the utils.php file. If you want to know how to validate the token, please take a look at the CSRF video. Now one thing I'm also remembering is that I forgot to do this exact same validation step when we send the validation email. So I'm just going to add this into the if statement down at the bottom of our send validation email function so that we're checking the CSRF token when they try to validate their email. So now we have to go to all the pages that either create or validate CSRF tokens and make sure that we start the session. So we're gonna have to do this at the top of our login.php page. We're also gonna have to do it at the top of our send validation request function and inside of our register page. This makes sure that we do this so that we can get the session ID when we create the CSRF token. So all the pages you see here, make sure you add session start to the top of them. So now we can go over to our JavaScript and set up our Ajax request to that PHP script. We're passing in the login form as all of our post data, and then we can go ahead and just see what our function returns. So we'll go back to our actual form and try this out. We'll actually get an error here because we set the cookie parameters for the session after we started the session, and that's because it is included in utils.php. So if we just move the session start before this, or sorry, after this include, we won't get that error anymore, and instead we just get nice error codes that we'd expect. If you look here, we got error code three, which corresponds to too many login attempts within the last hour, and that's because we haven't cleared our login attempts database yet, so let's just go ahead and do that. Now we get zero, which means that the user was actually logged in. Sweet. So like in previous videos, I'm just going to set up a little JavaScript here to print a message out to the user. And this isn't super important for the functionality, so I'm not going to go over it in great detail. I'm just going to speed through it and show you the result when I'm done. One thing I do want to do is if we get a zero back from our PHP script, we're going to send them to the home page using window.location. One thing that is worth mentioning is that I actually added a little link if the user has not been validated and when they click on that link it's going to take them to the little form they can fill out to resend the validation email to their inbox. One thing I forgot to do is actually add an else statement for the one if statement that checks if our post variables are set. If the post variables are not set we just want to tell the user that the username or password that they put in is incorrect. So now as you can see, if I just put in my email here and then put in some bogus password and try it a couple times, it's going to log all these login attempts and not allow us to log in after five of them. So let's go over to our database and just get rid of this for now so I can put in the correct password and try to actually log in. And as you can see, we are now into our secure site. However, our secure site is not actually secure. You could have just gone to this link without logging in. So to make it secure, we're going to go to our index.php page and check our logged in session variable. So if logged in is not set, or logged in does not equal true, we're just going to set the location header to the login page. And now our site is actually secure, and you have to log in in order to get to it. One thing we're going to do really quickly is actually create a logout.php script so that we can log out and actually test and make sure that our site is secure. So to log out, all you have to do is call session start and then session destroy. And then of course, we'll just link this to our JavaScript using our request function. I have a function already set up called logout that gets called whenever you press the logout button. So we'll just send a request to logout.php. And now here, when we pass the variables, we can actually just send false 
Now, if you remember when we send false, what it will do is it'll create a new form data object and then look for the CSRF token on that page. So we're still sending the CSRF token. Now we need to actually go and add this CSRF token to the index.php page. So we'll just copy it over from another page, of course, including utils as well. So if we want the logout feature to be protected from CSRF attacks, we just also have to validate the token here as well. So we'll just set up a little if statement to check if the CSRF token is set and that it's a valid token. And we'll only destroy the session if that's true. Now we can go ahead and echo out zero if this was successful and a one if it was not successful. And then in our JavaScript, we can just check to see if we received a zero. And we'll only send the user to the login page if we received a zero from this function. Now when we go back to our site, refresh and press log out, we are now logged out. And if we try to get to our the home page, it's just gonna send us right to the login page. Now if I actually go ahead and log in here, it will take us to the home page where we are now logged in. So that is how to create the login system along with all the other things that we've created so far. If you're enjoying these videos, please give them a like and stay tuned for the next video where we'll actually look at deleting the user's account. Thank you guys for watching.